Hi guys, Dave here with a new guitar solo lesson for you. This one's going to be a little bit different because it's a live solo and it's Steve Lukova, Toto and it's Georgie Porgy is the solo and it's taken from their 1990s concert uh, which was in Paris and this was, I remember, first being aired on the TV and uh, yeah, absolutely blew me away. Such great playing throughout the whole, um, the whole concert. Uh, but this is a very good example of the type of kind of lead stuff that he was doing at the time. Okay, let's get on with the lesson. So, the first thing is the key. It's in the key of E minor. And for the most part, he's using the E minor pentatonic, the uh, natural minor scale, and there's a little bit of chromatic movement as well. So uh, we'll talk about those as we get to it, I think. Okay, first phrase. <laughs> I'll just take that much. So that's all pentatonic. Sliding to the first note. Bend the note up a whole step, and then he repicks it. Um, I forgot to do this when I did the playthrough, but I'm sure you'll let me off. And then from there, once he's repicked it, he um, releases the bend, does a pull off. And that last note, very quick hammer on. These are sometimes called grace notes, um, and, and they are just, you're just crushing the notes together, basically. He does that a few times in the solo. Okay, next phrase. Okay, um, bit of position shift, Shifting, position shifting here. <laughs> okay. Backsliding to 12. Then jumps down to 7. Little slide on 9 there. That's it. Like that. Then the next bit. Again, you've got another little crush note, little grace note, little blues bend on fret seven there, little quarter tone bend, and then nine. And then this is one of my favorite licks in the whole solo. Um, so what he does there, he's on fret 10, he bends up a whole step, two frets, lets it back down, and then just pulls off one fret at a time. Now, I think that when he does this, he may be using his little finger, still gripping the string with the other fingers, but then what it does, it allows him to, to pull off one finger at a time, all the way down to fret seven. I've got into the habit of actually using three fingers and then the last one I just slide into. So choice is yours. So a little chromatic slide, and then the rest of it's... That's all natural minor. Then you get this little half step slide, which I do with my second finger. Seven to eight. Very nice. Okay, carrying on with that. Um, this is really nice. It's mainly pentatonic and it's all played on two strings with a set of slides. Uh, the other thing to take away from this though is that he's, um, he's using pedal points. He's going back to the lower note quite a lot. A lot of the time it's on the D string. And slides up. Again, you've got that little pedal on the new note. And sliding up to 12.
So particularly on that last bit, you know, he keeps bouncing back to that D string. So you can have a lot of fun with that sort of idea of just uh, bouncing on just one note and just go to other notes in the scale. So, you know, even in that position, you can have lots of fun with that sort of thing. Anyway, very typical Steve Luke of a move that. So I'll do that whole lick one more time slowly. There you go, little vibrato. Um, that's something else uh, worth mentioning is that he does this quite a lot where he'll bend a note and then he'll add vibrato onto that bend. If it's something you're new to, um, be patient. It can take a bit of practice to get the hang of being able to maintain a bend and add vibrato. Okay, next phase. Okay, so series of bends here, you've got the little, um, roll on the um, 12th fret of the B and E. Then you've got a whole step bend there at fret 15. And then the next one at 17, we're raking into it. So all I'm doing there is I'm muting off the strings above. So you get this little bit of a crunch before you get to the, the uh, B string. Bend that up a whole step as well. Now this last one is what they call a pre-bend. So basically, you're, it's fret 17, you're bending up to frets or a whole step but you're bending it before you pick it again this is one of those things it can take a little bit of practice if you've not done it before but after a while you get a feel for how far to bend okay next phrase oh sorry let me start that again Okay, um, this is another kind of Steve look of a trademark. So again, we've got their little um, pedal point again. Bend up. Repick the bend. And then what he does, he has his little finger onto the 18th fret while it's still bent. And then just play 17 normally. So I'll do that again. And the next phrase is very similar. Um, first bit you slide into. So up to putting a little finger on is the same, but this time what you're doing is you're letting that bend come back down. And then this time we're landing on the B string. So those two phrases together like so. Okay, next phrase. So natural minor this bit. And another one of those grace notes or crush notes, hammer-ons at the end. Um, I would say when you're playing this phrase, I think he kind of pulls the time back a little bit. So he drags intentionally just to make it sound a, a little bit more vocal-like, I think. Just a tiny bit, but it's a nice effect. Right. Next bit, it starts off with a slide. Now, I've put fret numbers in there, but really it's it's not important. It's really just him running his hand up and down the string. And then you get this little uh, phrase. Right. For the most part, it's uh, minor pentatonic. Again, you get that. 
and getting that pedal point again. Um, yeah, so borrowing from the natural minor scale there with the 14th fret, but for the most part, pentatonic. Uh, carrying on. So, yeah, nothing too uh, tricky there. You get a little um, quick bend and release on the 14th fret, that's just a half step, so that's one fret, and then just sliding up to the next position. Okay, uh, next bit, very similar to what we had before, doing the bend, re-pick it, then add the little finger, let it down, and then you've got 15 to land on this time. Okay, then you get um, some little sliding nicks. So, uh, sliding to 17 there, as you can see in the tab. And then you, now you're bending um, three frets, or a tone and a half, from the 19th fret, which is basically from a B up to a D. And he does it again, but this time just two notes before it. So. Then you get into the fast mega beast mode run that he does at the end here. Proper shredding. Um, this is very typical of the way he will play a lot of these sort of runs. He'll start off kind of slowly or like, you know, a, a slower beat division and then gradually build up the pace. So he starts with kind of basically uh, quaver triplets and then it, it starts to build up. So. So it's a long run, um, well worth kind of breaking this up into little pieces. Um, this is the way I practiced it. So, so the first bit I practiced was the first couple of uh, beats of it. Just getting that part. So the kind of the group of six at the end there. Then he really builds up the pace. Uh, and again, this is something I practiced as a, like a little cell or a little block. Now, the C sharp that you're hearing there, it's not really in key but because he's playing it so quick you're not going to notice and i'm sure he didn't care at the time it was just uh, caught in the moment and then a uh, little bit of relief on the picking hand he does a little hammer pull off that's natural minor with a c natural in there then you get a little group of six. Oh, i should say more of a blues scale like this like so. Um, yeah, not the cleanest of playing on this. Sometimes he's hitting uh, a couple of extra strings when he does some of this, but don't worry if you don't hit it as a double stop. He's really aiming for the first string on that. But he's caught the B string with it, I think. Like that, landing on the, uh, the blue note. B flat. And then this next bit is just pure minor pentatonic. Now, uh, this part again, I'd break up a little bit. I did it in groups of four, and it's kind of a good idea to, uh, when you're learning fast runs like this, is to break them up like that by accenting the first note of each group of four. So. So that's the way I did it. I just put accents in and then it made it easier when I was putting the whole thing together. 
the very last note is kind of it's a little bit of a delay because I think he's trying to get it to coincide with uh, a hit on the drums that happens right at the end of the solo. Um, but that's the way to tackle long runs like that. Just break it up into manageable chunks, put accents on the strong parts of the phrase, and uh, yeah, and then just it's just a case of just building it up slowly over time. Okay, that's the end of the solo. Right, to finish off, I'll just talk about his sound a little bit. And believe me, if you know better than me about what he's using, feel free to leave a comment in the box. I'm always interested in uh, in uh, knowing what other people know, basically. Um, around that time, I know during the 80s, Ampwise, he was using Mesa Boogies a lot, but I know he did switch over to Soldanos for a while and Bogner Amps eventually. And I think to this day, I think he still uses the Bogner Amps. So I think that's pretty much his overdrive tone. He's coming from the amp. So it could be a Bogner, Soldano. I think it's more like that rather than a boogie. Um, other than that, effects-wise, he's there's a big reverb. Now, that might be coming from the hall that they played in, or it might be something that they stuck in the rack on the mix. So um, I've got um, a big plate reverb to, to get my sound going there. So. <laughs> Don't know how much of that's going to come across, but uh, you'll get the idea. Um, other than that, he does quite like to use long delays, and they're quite laid back in the mix, so they don't get in the way of all the notes. So, and I've got it quite low. You just about hear it. It might be a little bit higher than that when you're playing in the mix. But having a little bit of that in the background is quite nice. Um, the other thing that he might be doing, and I know he did do this for a little while, um, is put a chorus in the effects loop, but very, very subtle. So it is slight that he thickens the sound up just a tad. So I'll put a little bit of chorus on. Like I say, it's very subtle, it's barely noticeable, but you can actually feel it when you're playing. It's a funny thing that. Um, yeah, it just yeah, makes you play with a little bit more confident. You've got a bit more kind of girth to the sound, so to speak. Now, guitar-wise, I know he was using his Valley Arts guitar with EMG pickups, and it was basically the neck pickup, and it's really a single coil design pickup that was, was in that guitar. As you can see, I've got a, a humbucker, but this guitar was just the easiest one to play for this particular solo so I chose this one uh, so all I did was to, to make it sound a little bit more like what he's got there I just took a lot of the bass and mid out of the amp controls and it just kind of thinned the sound out just enough to sound a little bit closer to what he had in the concert okay I think that's all the information I got for you um, this is a great solo I think you know if you get the hang of it there's lots to learn from it the pedal point ideas the chromatic runs, yeah, just his general phrasing and his timing is just superb. His phrasing is just spotless. Really, really great. So I'm sure you're going to get a lot from it. I hope you enjoy the process of learning this solo, and I will see you guys for another one in the near future. See you later.